What's up guys? This video is going to go over how to inspect the trailer upper coupler and the trailer kingpin. Uh, the regulations that cover uh, this inspection are I believe part 393 subpart F. Uh, that's uh, coupling devices and towing methods. Uh, we're gonna go over, we're gonna start with a visual inspection and then we're gonna check the kingpin to see how square it is with the upper coupler. Make sure there's not uh, any uh, excessive amount of wear on the neck or on the shoulder uh, and then lastly we're going to inspect the upper coupler for flatness and there's regulations that we uh that we have from uh, sae j700 and i believe is sae j228 i believe um they go over uh wear limits that are allowed for the uh, upper coupler all right so we'll start over the uh visual inspection so we wanna look at the bottom rail bolts holding the upper coupler in place, all right? So we're making sure that all the bottom rail bolts are on there and that they're tight. If they're rivets, making sure the rivets are uh, effective and not sheared off or uh, otherwise ineffective. Looking at the bottom rail itself, making sure there's no deformation between the bottom rail and the upper coupler. The upper coupler is uh, steel and the bottom rail is aluminum and uh, two unlike metals together will corrode uh, and uh, something you have to watch out for. All right, so we're coming around the front here, looking up the pickup plate right here, uh, looking for any major dents, breaks in the welds, anything like that, any dishing here, if it's pushed up uh, an excessive amount, uh, if it'll interfere with the tractor coupling with the trailer, um, that's something that we wanna, that we wanna repair. All right, so we're gonna come around on the other side. Again, looking at the bottom rail, making sure our bottom rail bolts are there, that the bottom rail itself looks like it's in good shape. Uh, just ignore that. I believe that's why it's here for repair. All right. So from here, visual looks pretty good. Um, we're going to go on to the uh, kingpin inspection. All right. So now we're checking out the uh, kingpin. Again, we're going to check the kingpin for squareness against the upper coupler. Uh, the regulation for that is it's literally one degree. It's not much, plus or minus one degree. So um, if you notice that it's kicked back or forward more than one degree, uh, that's the reason for uh, repair or replacement. All right, so um, here's our kingpin gauge. Uh, a lot of people might be familiar with the, the blue Holland one, the plastic ones. We weren't a big fan of those, so we got these metal ones. Uh, but it's gonna do three different things. We're gonna measure our shoulder, which is this bigger part right down here, and then measure our neck right here, all right? And the neck is two inches. Now the maximum wear that we're allowed on this is an eighth of an inch. But instead of getting a pair of calipers out and measuring this, they made this gauge right here. It's a go-no-go no gauge. Go, no go gauge. Uh, and you just put it on there and basically if it slides in here, that means this thing is so worn that it's allowed to slide in this smaller than two inch slot. And uh, it's, uh, it's a reason to fail the uh, kingpin. All right, cause that's not gonna be able to, that's not gonna let the tractor uh, safely couple with the trailer. All right, so um, so we got the shoulder measurement, the neck measurement, and then we're gonna measure how square the kingpin is uh, with the upper coupler with this gauge right here. So I guess we're gonna do that first. When you're doing this, uh, you wanna clean off the grease as much as you can uh, off of where you're measuring because you're not gonna be able to see a gap uh, in there if there's a, a lot of grease. I mean, you don't have to go down to shiny metal, but get it clean. All right, so you just wanna put this up against the upper coupler and then run it into the kingpin. I wouldn't recommend just putting it on the kingpin because if you just push it up against the kingpin and this is bent, you know, imagine this like this, um, you know, you're gonna see uniform daylight in here and think that everything's straight. So I recommend pushing it up against the upper coupler, running it into the kingpin. All right, now you can see right here, if we imagine that this kingpin was kicked back and that's where you're gonna see most of the damage when the driver's backing up into it, if they come too fast, it's gonna bend that kingpin back. All right, so imagine this kingpin was bent back. Well, we would have zero daylight right here because this this bottom part would be kicked out, all right? And then we'd see uh, a good amount of daylight up here because, again, because it'd be kicked. So that would be evidence of the kingpin being uh, out of square. Again, you can get a uh, laser level or something like that, digital level rather, to uh, confirm it, but uh, this is a quick cool tool to check it. It's important when you do that, you just don't throw it up uh, behind the kingpin and just do one measurement. You're checking uh, at least three or four different spots to making sure that uh, kingpin is square all the way around. 
And when you're looking at the kingpin, you know, when you clip, when I clean this off, you can see there's some nicks in here. Anything really bad, you might want to, you know, kind of lightly dress with the file. You never want to take a grinder or anything super abrasive on these. Um, if they do wear down, it's not the end of the world. Um, we've had a, a fleet of trailers here that the, the whole thing uh, they bought, uh, they had bad kingpins and we called, uh, I believe it was kingpin specialists. And they came out and they got a really slick setup where they have a guy come out here and he welds it up. He has a rig where he rotates around the kingpin. And then they got a similar rig that comes down and turns out, uh, turns down the uh, outer radius. And it's, and you know, we still maintain the trailers and we check them out and they're, and they're still good. So it's a, it's a pretty neat process. It's not the end of the world if you have a, a bad kingpin, you can't get repaired. Uh, but if you do have a get bad kingpin, you definitely want to check out the rest of the upper coupler, especially the reinforcements on the inside. Um, because if that's bad, there's no point in repairing the kingpin if the whole thing's shot. So anyway, we'll get to checking the uh, shoulder and the neck. And it's real easy. Again, it's a go, no-go gauge. So I'm going to slide this over the shoulder. If it enters this, this slot right here, then I know that it's a failing condition. All right, so again, the shoulder's the upper part, and this lower part right here. Same measurement, okay, just rotate it around, go up, go down, try to get in different areas. Uh, but you can pretty much look at it here. You can see there's not any damage or anywhere. Um, all right, so that's checked out good. We're gonna check the uh, neck. Again, we're gonna use this gauge right here. Moving it all the way around, and we're moving up and down. All right, it didn't enter the gauge at all there, so we know that part's good. Now we're gonna check the neck here, or shoulder rather. All right, and we see that didn't enter our slot, so that looks good. So that's how you check the kingpin for squareness and to see if the uh, shoulder and neck has excessive wear. Okay, so this last measurement that we're gonna do is measuring how flat the upper coupler is, all right? So what they want you to do is take a straight edge and you can see our fine serrate uh, four foot straight edge here. Uh, they're gonna be taking a straight edge and they want you to put it up against the upper coupler and we're looking for gaps uh, in between here. So if there was a gap in between here, that would indicate that the, that the upper coupler is pushed up. Uh, if it was rocking here, that would be indicate that the kingpin is pushed down. All right, and they give you some numbers here to take your measurements. And the number they give you is for a 38 inch diameter. And you can see why they give you 38 inches. If you look at the grease on that upper coupler, that's where the that's where the uh, fifth wheel is riding on the uh, on the tractor against the upper coupler. So that's why they give you that 38 inches. That's where the uh, upper or rather the uh, fifth wheel is riding. So this area right here is really important. So what they want is you get a straight edge, and again, just like the uh, on the kingpin gauge, you're going to go on you know a couple of different ways. You're going to go this way, and you're going to go across, but upward deflection uh, how far the upper coupler is ought to be pushed up is 1 16th of an inch on a 19 inch radius so that 38 inch uh, diameter so um, measuring out this far if you uh, put a straight edge across here uh, if you measure any of this point and you get more than a 16th of an inch gap it's not much uh, then that upper upper coupler needs to be uh, repaired or replaced all right Again, you're going to check a couple different ways. I didn't do the greatest job of cleaning the grease off of here. But what you would do is put it up there and basically just put your straight edge up or behind it and see if you can see that sixteenth of an inch gap in between there. So that's for how far the upper coupler, or rather the, uh, the plate is allowed to be pushed up. For how far it's allowed to be bent down, it's a little bit more. So in a 38 inch diameter, at 19 inches out, it's allowed to be bowed out a quarter inch. So if it was pushed out this far and you had your scale behind here, it'd be allowed a quarter inch at this point. At uh, 10 inches, it's only allowed half of that, eighth of an inch. So this can be bellied down an eighth of an inch at nine inches or a quarter inch at, uh, at uh, 19 inches. Um, and it can only be bellied up uh, a 16th of an inch. So that's how you check the upper coupler for flatness.